Hello there, this is Sheldon again. Welcome back to IOSC Tutorials. Today, let's talk about Alamo Fire, which is a third-party SDK that a lot of people have been using for downloading contents from the internet. So um, in this demo, I plan to do two things. The first one, we download JSON data, and second one, we download a big image with a progress bar. So in that case, you can the user can see the progress um, of downloading the whole image with clear like percentage of the data. What I do want to mention is that this video tutorial is requested by one of the viewers. So if you have any questions or you have any idea about what tutorial that could be valuable for a lot of other guys you can have your request to me and depends on the time if i think it's a good topic i will definitely make a video about it so enough words let's dig in so the first step you should open your browser and using google to tap align of fire and then github and you will find the first link here. So this will be the Alamo Fire SDK for uh, our iOS and only. Uh, as you may notice here, it has like 21,000, almost 22,000 stars, which means this SDK is widely used and recommended by multiple people. So when you scroll down, you will see the descriptions of this SDK and it has such so many good features and what we're gonna do is just the second one uh, we download the content or we request from the url and then to get the json data and second one is to use this closure feature to download data uh, typically is image data okay so if you scroll down you will find different ways to for the installation the first one is using Cocoa Pass. The second one is using Carthage, which is the homebrew. So basically, when you run Cocoa Pass or Carthage, you are creating a um, workspace instead of your home project. Uh, in this project, I don't think I will use either of this because we have an easier way to simply drag and drop what we need there for our own project and using the Lamo Fire SDK. So as it shows, we can manually download whatever we need. Okay, so first let's download their project. So after you download it and unzip the file, um, let's go to the folder and go to the example and open the LS example. So it will ask your permission to open the file uh, sure, we want to open it and then uh, you will see this folder um, of the frameworks. So let's quickly run uh, this example project and see uh, what they do in this uh, official example. I mean, just uh, take a look. We won't spend a lot of time on it. So basically you have all the functions that is listed here. But today, I will only explain two things like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So let's do it now. Uh, so next up, what you need to do is just right click this and then click show in finder. And in this case, we can copy and paste this framework onto our desktop, okay? So the framework is ready. And now let's create our own project. If we come to Xcode, just create a new Xcode project using single view application and a lemo fire download demo. And next and next create. Let's simply drag and drop the framework under our project folder and make sure you check this copy items if needed okay so as you may notice here if we drag and drop the alamo fire framework you will find this automatically added and uh, let's try to run our project here and in here we need to import alamo fire and 
let's run our project in iPhone 7. Yes, so the app will crash. The reason is a lamp fire the framework because we didn't use Cocoa Pass or Package to download. We don't. We didn't create the whole workspace. Means the project is not configured that well. So we need to do a something by our own. So because this is the dynamic library, as you can see, it's DUILD. Uh, so we need to go to the project and scroll down here and use uh, add something in embedded binaries. Actually, we just need to add a lamo fire framework here. And as you want, you can delete one for the linked framework with libraries. And in this case, if we run our project again, definitely the app will not crash. Okay, so I will do two things. Uh, as I said in the beginning of the video, we will do JSON downloading as well as image downloading. I mean, there are some examples here. For example, for JSON downloading, we can simply try this one. So if we come to the view controller and let's create one function called download JSON and paste here. So basically we are using their um, function that align of fire dot request with URL. And the best thing of align of fire framework um, is like the way how to say chain programming. So first you make a line of fire. I mean if we type it by our own request you can see only you don't have the rest part because if you type request after that you can do response data or progress even so this makes your having a lot of freedom that usually not happen in the apple native framework for swift so let's use this only so let's try to open their example data in here Actually, I have already opened it. As we can see, actually, it's a big JSON data with a dictionary inside, argues, headers, whatever, our region, URL. And let's try to run our project to see what we will get. Download JSON. And let's run our project. So in this case, we are invoking this download JSON function in our view date load function. And okay, so we are printing out everything. Basically, the first one is original uh, URL, and second one is response. The third one is data, which will show only how many bytes there, and the final one will be the result. Result includes status code, as 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 well as JSON data. So after you download, we can use an if let. Uh, syntax to get the JSON data with response dot result dot value. So this is very straightforward and compared to our other uh, tutorials about downloading JSON, this is like a no-brainer. Okay, now let's work on the second function, which is download image. So basically, we are following the similar way that we have used for downloading um, JSON data. So lamo fire dot request. We have the URL, but this case we will have this progress in between, and after that we can use response data. So uh, as I say, this advantage of the chain programming is that you have freedom that even you don't have this download progress, you can directly append response data there, just like what we have done here. Similar. Okay, so first uh, let's find a URL that has a big image. So I've already found it here. The way you just uh, the way to do it, you just uh, search large image in Google and um, visit page, and then right click and open image in new tab. This is how you find big images. And if we come back to our project and copy paste the link there, 
the first app is done. So second one, you just tap enter here, and we will define a progress. This progress, we will need a fraction completed. Let's first print out this fraction completed. So this should be um, a calculated value from changing from 0 to 1, as you may notice that I've already tried it before I um, do it here. So next step, which is the final step of the section function, is we print out, we need the response at the end. So this is like the completion handler that everything finished. We will use the data to update the image or image view in our UI. So we can simply print out response dot uh, result. Yeah, this is like uh, this step. It will return success a string of like success here or failure. Um, also, we will print. We can print out the response dot result dot value, which will be a big value. Uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to print it. Okay. Anyways, let's uh, run our uh, project with download image in the view did load. Okay, the project is running here, and okay, so we can see um, the image is downloaded, but I don't know why it's so fast. It's supposed to be slower. That shows all the progress uh, from zero, changing from zero to one. But the result is success, and as you can see, it's 43 NB image, and it shouldn't be this fast. Actually, we can try another image, maybe something in the cache um, cause this issue, and let's try the other one, I guess. And open link in new tab. Okay, this one. And pay, copy and paste the link here. And run our project again. So as you guys can see here, the download process is done with all this progress. Okay. So now we're gonna put a progress bar in our UI, and finally we will update our image view in our UI. So if we come to the storyboard, let's simply search image view. in this tab, of course, image view here, and let's search a progress bar. Uh, okay, here. Okay, let's um, drag our IV outlets there. So we gonna need our image view, IMG view. as well as the progress bar progress bar okay so we can in the view did load we can do some basic setting for our progress bar progress bar dot uh, initial value or uh, dot progress is equal to zero at the beginning so in this case, by default, it's in the half of the whole total bar. Uh, we are making it zero. Let's update our progress bar by progress bar self dot progress bar dot progress is equal to progress dot fraction completed. So this is a little bit confusing because we named this guy as progress in the completion, I mean, in the closure. So if we, yeah, let's use a full screen. Okay, so let's see what's the reason. Okay, we need to convert it into float because it taking float as the input. Mm. Okay, and uh, finally, if everything is done and nothing wrong happened, if let, Arrays data 
is equal to response dot result dot value means um, if the data is coming so we can make self dot image view dot image is equal to ui image with data yes and it will be the data here um, this will cause some issue so we are not completely done and let's see what's what's happening as we can see the progress bar is working fine actually i expect some issue because we didn't put our ui related stuff in the main thread but actually uh, i believe inside of a lamifier is automatically handled means although it's in a block they have some logic inside to make this um, reach our main thread so i think this is pretty much about it uh, the final project will be available in a github repository that i will post the link down below in the description and uh, you can also visit their alamofire github official link uh, to discover more functions from them uh, basically this sdk is so powerful that a lot of enterprise apps they are using it as well i mean from adherence so you should definitely try it it will make your life easier plus they really have handled all this ui issue make it happen in the main thread so you don't need to worry about that part as well yeah i forgot to mention one thing that i want to say thanks to sean farrell who donated 60 dollars to me so if you guys want to donate i have a link in here you can use paypal to donate i will say thank you in advance all right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in next tutorial.